This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Glory to your name, the Heavenly Father. We worship you. We praise you. All I'm saying in the day there. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for this day. And we just ask you, Lord, as we come together on this Sunday school lesson this morning, Lord, just have your way. Have your way, dear Heavenly Father. Have your way, dear Lord. Oh, Lord, have your way. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless, bless. We plead the blood of every, over, over this technology, God. We plead the blood of everyone that is listening now and listening to this recording later. We plead your blood, oh God. Mm. Bless, God. Cover us. Keep us. Even when we can't keep ourselves, Lord. We trust you. We trust you, God. We trust you. We love you. We adore you. And we magnify you, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Bless now, Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson edition, and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy. Um, um, my heart is heavy this morning, and um, we've had a tragedy this week, and then had another tragedy last night. Um, uh, I had a great nephew to die on Monday, and then I had a cousin to pass on last night. So it's... Um, cousin is named Lanny and uh, it just it's just hard right now it's just hard right now uh, but we know that God is able to keep us uh, let the weak say I am strong and we know that his mercy and his grace his presence and his peace is right here with us oh hallelujah and we thank you Lord and we thank you so I just, just say again, Lord, give me the strength now to, to teach your word according to your word. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our lesson for today comes from Ezekiel. Um, the title of today's lesson is Ezekiel's Calling. And uh, we're going to be looking at the third chapter, uh, verses 1 through 11. Uh, Ezekiel calling into the uh, to the prophetic ministry. It started at birth in chapter one, and and it goes all the way over to chapter three. But we're just going to look at the end part of chapter three. So please, please keep us in your prayers as we teach this lesson this morning. I'm going to read the lesson out of the New Living Translation. Um, um, the New Living Translation um, um, gives a, a, a very concise uh, a rendition of this passage of Scripture. Um, so if you're reading out of a King James or a New King James, you'll still be able to follow. It's just more of an English language wording for this lesson. And it reads like this. The voice said to me, Son of man, eat what I, I'm giving you. Eat this scroll. Then go and give its message to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he fed me with the scroll. Fill your stomach with this, he said. And when I ate it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said, son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my message. Verse five, I am not sending you to a foreign people with whose language you cannot understand. No, no, I, I, I'm not sending you to people with strange and difficult speech. If I did, 
they would listen. Verse 7, but the people of Israel won't listen to you any more than they listen to me. For the whole lot of them are hard-hearted and stubborn. But look, I have made you as obstinate and hard-hearted as they are. I have made your forehead as hard as the hardest rock. So don't be afraid of them or fear their angry looks, even though they are rebels. Verse 10. Then he added, son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Let's listen to them carefully for yourself. Then go to your people in exile and say to them, this is what the Lord, the sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. That 11th verse is the key verse for, for this morning. Uh, go, then go to your people in exile. And say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. Have you ever met a hard-headed person? Now, and if you have not met one, I'm one of those hard-headed people. And they, 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 they are stubborn. They get something in their mind and in their heart and in their head and they 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 won't move from it and 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 we typically say that if you got a hard head you have a soft behind uh, because there are those who who when they're hard headed uh, do things that are not right and, and and they get caught up in hard headed behavior but this lesson today, this lesson today is, is giving us an example of the children of Israel who were hard headed and going down a wrong path. But it also gives us an example of a prophet named Ezekiel who was also given a hard head to preach, to teach, and to prophesy the word of God. And he had to have a hard head because he had to deal with the people who were hard headed. But at the same time that this lesson shows us that he had a hard head and that the Israelites were a hard headed people, we see a soft, compassionate heart that God had placed into Ezekiel. His heart was full of the Lord's compassion for his people, for the people of Israel who were in exile at this time. Oh, hallelujah. And so our key concept for this morning is that God called Ezekiel and sent him with a message, with messages to warn the Israelites. My keys for kids this morning is that, number one, God's people had disobeyed him and were uh, sent to live in a foreign country in exile. Two, God sent prophets with warnings and messages for his people. And third, a priest named Ezekiel was one of the prophets sent to the people of Israel during their exile period. So as we look at this lesson today, the learning facts is to describe the context of Ezekiel's call and his commission. And the biblical principles that we're going to deal with is to emphasize that those called by God must experience the word for themselves before they can share it with others. And then the daily application we want to take away from this lesson 
is to stand firm, to not alter God's word as we proclaim it with love, with grace, with mercy and compassion. We are to stand firm on his word. Every time I, I read that, I, 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 I think about that song, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. All of the ground is like sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. For a background of this lesson, uh, the, the, the priest and prophet Ezekiel, his name means God is my strength. And, and he was a priest. Uh, 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 his father was a priest. And, 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 and the, the, the children of, of Israel, those who, who were in the kingdom of Judah, uh, were, 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 were missing all of the warnings and all of the prophecies that had came to them that if they didn't turn from their wicked ways, from uh, worshiping other gods, for not listening to the true and living God, that God was going to do to them what had also been done to the, the, the other kingdom of Israel, which was called Israel. They were already in captivity, and now the people of, of, of um, I mean, the, 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 excuse me, the people of Judah were already in captivity, and now the people of Israel the, uh, uh, were getting ready to go into captivity. I know I said it right the first time. I'm sorry. Because the relative, the Israel was one kingdom and Judah was one king because they had split and Israel were now defeated and enslaved. And now it was coming time for Judah to fall. That's, I got it right. Praise God. We pray, as, as my sister has ta taught me, Helen, Pastor Helen has taught me, we pray for no error right now in the name of Jesus. We come up against any error in speaking God's word today. And so here it was that that Ezekiel, he didn't go with the first people who the Babylonians took into slavery, like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. But he came in five years later because he was part of, of, of the priesthood. And 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 at the time in which he came, his wife had died. Uh, and, 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 and he was going through a mourning period, but, but God called him in the midst of what he was going through. And he, and he turned to God to, to, to do the things that God wanted him to do. Even though Nebuchadnezzar had invaded Jerusalem and all the people were now going into exile, this, this prophet, this, this priest, this preacher, dedicated his life to God and to help the people in the midst of what they were going through. And so now that's the background of this lesson. And now the, 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 the outline that we're going to look at, we're going to look at the call of, of Ezekiel. And like I said, it started at verse in chapter one, but we're going to just look at uh, the verses in chapter three, verses one through three. And then we're going to look at the commission of Ezekiel, which is uh, verses four and nine. And then we're going to look at his commitment. Yes, he was committed, called, commissioned, and committed. I'm going to say those three again, called, commissioned, and committed. Now, those three, those three points are going to jump out in this lesson because that's where we want to be. And when God calls us, we want to have his commission to go out to the world. And then we want to be committed. Jesus told us in, in Matthew, he says, go ye therefore, I, I, I'm sending you out to to, 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 to preach and to teach and to, 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 to save and to disciple and go and do it till the end of the world. And he later told us that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon us and give us power 
power to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and even to the uttermost parts of the world. So we we have our calling. We have our commission because we're part of a royal priesthood a holy people and a holy nation. And, and, and it's our job to tell this old dying world, this old sinful, perverse world, even in the generation that we're living in, that there is a God that's able to forgive you, that's willing to forgive you if you just repent and turn from your wicked ways. He will accept you. He will bless you. He will forgive you. He will save you. And once that covenant is made, he'll be there with you, abiding with you and keeping you until the end of this life and then keep you for everlasting life. It, it is appropriate for me to always say one of the most famous passages of scriptures in all of the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life because that is the good news. Even as a prophet, as a preacher, and as a teacher, when we tell people of the warnings of God and the consequences of sin, we still must have it seasoned with the love of God, with the compassion of God, with the mercy and grace of God. Because if we don't, we're not giving them the gospel. We're not giving them the good news. And that's what God wants us to do. Give the good news and tell it on the mountains, everywhere we go. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the good news. And so let's look at this calling of uh, 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 verses one through three. And like I said, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. The voice said to me, son of man, Eat what I am giving you. Eat the scroll, then go and give its message to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he fed me the scroll. Fill your stomach with this, he said. And when I ate it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Oh, hallelujah. The voice that he was hearing was the voice of God and God was speaking to him and telling him to eat this scroll, eat the word of God. And this scroll had the word written on it. We find out early in chapter two, written on the front and written on the back. And the majority of the scroll, if not all of the scroll, was lamentations and warnings and, 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 and things that were seen so very hard for, for, for one to, to, to speak. But at the same time, when Ezekiel ate this word, this hard word, it was still sweet as honey. Oh, glory to God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, hallelujah. And his word has power. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Oh, hallelujah. How sweet is his word. Because his word will endure forever. It's God's word, not our word. It's God's word, not, not, not our thoughts, not our opinions, but God's word. Oh, hallelujah. And God gave e Ezekiel both a, a, a audible revelation by telling him to do something, but he also gave him physical revelations for him to see things and, and experience things. And so when he told him, eat this word, he, he didn't tell him to literally eat it. He, he was talking symbolically and figuratively. And, 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 and he was telling him, take this word, the word of God, and digest it into your body, digest it into your belly, get it into your stomach, because when it gets into your stomach, it's going to flow out of you like rivers of living water. Oh, hallelujah. 
And, and Ezekiel, when he heard this calling, when he, when he received this word from God, he responded and he ate the word. He digested the word. He consumed the word. Oh, hallelujah. We ought to be consumers of God's word that we may rightly divide the word of truth. We have to internalize it. It just can't be somebody else's word. It has to be God's word. It just can't be what you heard somebody else say or what your mama living off of or what your daddy living off of. You have to get the word of God in you for yourself. Somebody on Facebook ought to say amen. You got to get the word for yourself so that you can stand on that word for yourself. Self. Oh, hallelujah. And he had to get that word. God told him to get this word. Eat this scroll. Feed on it. Fill your stomach. Is there anything that we could be glutton over? We can be glutton over God's word and consuming God's word. Just get as much of it. But the whole thing is, it's not just to get God's word and to know God's word because even the devil himself knows God's word. But it's to get God's word internally in you and obey him. And that's what Ezekiel did. When God told him to eat, he responded with obedience to the word of God. He responded with obedience. He, he, he ate the word. And we have to be obedient to the word of God that he gives us. The, the, the old songwriter say, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. You want to feel your, 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 your uh, I mean, you want to increase your faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more word you ingest, the more word you consume, the more word that's in you, the stronger you get. You've heard me probably say this, this illustration before, but it, it begs to, to, to come out again. There was this man who used to go around fighting dogs. He had two dogs. He had a white dog and a black dog. And he would have these two dogs fighting. And as the dogs fought, he would, they would take bets over the dogs. And the man who, who owned the dog, he always knew which dog was going to win. People thought he had some kind of signal or whatever that he was doing to, to, to tell one dog to lose and one dog to win. And finally, when the man who owned the dog got sick and was on his dying bed, his friends asked him a simple question. Say, man, come on, man. All of these years, we didn't see you fighting these dogs and you always knew which dog was going to win. Please, man, tell me your secret. He said, I always knew which one was going to win because the one that was going to win was the one I fed. Oh, hallelujah. When you feed your spirit with the word of God, you will always win. But if you're only feeding your flesh with the world's system and the world's way of doing things, you will be weak. We have to feed our spirit with the word of our living God. It's a living word. But not only is he supposed to ingest this word and, and, and feed on this word and obey this word, but then he has to live this word. Because you heard the old saying, you are what you eat. If you eat the word, you will become a walking epistle. 
And many people, they don't want to just hear what you have to say. They want to look at you and watch you and read you. And you'll be the message of God. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you love on people, the, the kindness that's in you, the gentleness and all of the fruit of the spirit, the joy, the peace, the love, the faith, the self-control, the gentleness, kindness and meekness. When we live the word of God, we become a walking epistle. Friend of mine, he talks about the 67th book of the Bible. We know that there are 66 books in the Bible. We become that 67th, a walking epistle of God. And people can look at our lives and see our, and, and glorify God. Because God, I don't know about you. He's done a mighty work in me. God has changed me. God has, 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 has empowered me and anointed me. And, 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 and people who, who used to know me when, when I was a hard-headed hellraiser see me now and they said, oh man, God is an awesome God. If he can turn that boy around, he, he, he's able to turn anybody around. Oh, hallelujah. So Ezekiel had his calling and he responded with obedience and, and did what God told him to do. And the word of God, when he ate it, even though it was hard, was still sweeter than honey. Oh, I'm encouraging you. You might be going through some stuff and you don't know which way to go and you don't know how the Lord is leading you and you want an answer. You want some understanding. Well, I say to you, taste and see. Taste his word and see for yourself that the Lord is good. Our next section, after the calling, we're going to look at the commission. This is verses four through nine. Then he said, son of man, Go, that's the, that's the commission, go to the people of Israel and give them my message. That's this, we're looking at the third chapter of Ezekiel, verse four, now verse five. I am not sending you to a foreign people whose language you can't understand. No, I am not sending you to people with strange and difficult speech. If I did, then you would, then they would listen. But the people of Israel won't listen to you any more than they'll listen to me. For the whole lot of them are hard hearted and stubborn. But look, I have made you as obstinate and hard hearted as they are. I have made your forehead as hard as the hardest rock. So don't be afraid of them or fear their angry looks, even though they are rebellious. God gave him a commission. It's a, and this commission is sort of like the same thing that he told Jeremiah when he told Jeremiah, don't be afraid of them. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a boldness to be able to speak your, the word that I've given you. Just like he told Mo, don't be afraid of Pharaoh. I'm going to give you a boldness to speak my word. Even though these people, they, 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 they are my people. They should receive my word. But I swear I'm sending you to, because I know if I sent you to a, a foreign land, if I sent you to a foreign people, like I sent jo uh, 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 Jonah, they, they, the people will repent like the people of Nineveh did. But my people, the ones I'm sending you to right now, they are hard-headed. They are hard-hearted. They're being stubborn. But just as bad as they're being hard-headed and stubborn, I'm going to make you hard-headed. I'm going to make you stubborn so that you can be able to preach thus says the Lord. In season 
and out of season to give them a word. And when you give them this word, he, we, we look in later on in, 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 in Ezekiel, when he started talking to the dry bones and, and the dry bones came alive because the spirit of God came upon them. Ezekiel words, bless God's people. Ezekiel was warned, and as we are being warned, that we have to preach God's word to the people. And, and that's our job. That's our responsibility. And once we preach the word to them and taught them what thus says the Lord, then the blood is not on our hands. But if we don't preach the word, oh, glory, oh, hallelujah, mercy, God. If we don't preach the word, the blood is on our hands. If we don't tell the people what thus says the Lord, the, the blood of those people are on our hands. I, I don't know about you. I don't want nobody's blood on my hands. I want to tell them what thus says the Lord. I want to let them know. I know that, but, but it's got to be seasoned with love. It can't be seasoned with anger and wrath. It can't be seasoned with hurt and malice, but it must be seasoned with the love of God. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And we must show compassion. We must give them a word of love. But we got to preach it and we got to teach it, even if it's a hard word. And the children of Israel, while they were in exile in Babylon, they, 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 they should have, because of the suffering, the common suffering that they was going through, should turn to God. It's similar today. You, we know the world is, 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 is going through all kind of troubles and trials and tribulations. And people look like they're turning to everything and anything but to God and his word. There's nothing new under the sun. God already knows the end from the beginning. He's the alpha and the omega. And I thank God that he gave us an answer. He gave us a solution. And that solution, that answer, that relief, is spelled J-E-S-U-S. -S. It's Jesus. You don't understand? Don't lean on your understanding. Trust Jesus. You need an answer? Seek Jesus. You can't understand the trials and the tribulations and the, all the grief and mourning and everything going on? Trust Jesus. He's the answer. And he that begun a good work in you will complete it. Trust Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Well, finally, after he was commissioned to go and speak to the hard-headed people and was given a, a boldness and, and a strength to give God's word, he had to make a choice. And after we've been called and after we commission, we have to make a choice to be committed. And so verses 10 and 11 reads, then he added, son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. Then go to the people in exile and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. I didn't talk about the title son of man. We know that in the New Testament, Jesus was given that title as, as a messianic title, meaning a title of anointing and a title of Christ. Uh, of, 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 of his anointing and his uh, sonship to God. When God used this for Ezekiel, he wasn't using it in the messianic sense, but he was using it 
in the human sense that 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 Ezekiel was human but God was going to strengthen him and make him supernatural spiritual and he said when you take this word get it in you first I am very careful I I I, I don't try ever to preach a word that I have not studied or experienced or obeyed myself. So it's a lot of the word of God that 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 I, I can't preach because I, I haven't internalized it. And I'm okay with that because I'm trying to obey what I do know. Oh, I just said something to somebody. You, you got to obey what you do know. And when you obey what you do know, then he'll give you revelations of some more. And so if you just keep going around in circles and circles because it's stuff that you have not obeyed that you already know. Obey it. Get it in you first. Listen to it carefully. Listen to that word carefully. My mom, she has a scripture and I call it my favorite scripture. She's her favorite scripture. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. I'm learning every day. To trust him more. And more. And more. Trying to obey that trusting in him. And then. To lean on him. And not lean on my own understanding. Oh, hallelujah. And I know every moment, every second, every time I do that, he directs my path and shows me the way. We ought to do the same. Each of us. Yes, so that your faith can get stronger. Because God wants you to be committed to him. And he wants you to get it first in you, just like he told the children of Israel. And we know that we live in a generation where so many people are exiled. And what do you mean they exiled? Well, w one of the parts about being exiled was that they no longer could be at the temple in Jerusalem. They couldn't be at the house of worship where they knew what the presence of God is. We, we, we got people today that haven't stepped in a church, haven't opened a Bible, and they feel exiled. They are in exile, whether they feel it or not. And God wants us to tell them that he's a loving God, that he cares and that he knows where they are and that they are welcome to come home and be with them. Yes, we are pilgrims in this barren land, but we have a home up in glory. And all we have to do is trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Get into his word, study his word, increase in faith, and be committed to the path that he is leading you and guiding you into. Oh, hallelujah. So as we get ready to close this lesson, I always like to give my thoughts to ponder. Number one is God's messenger. We must receive the word within ourselves we must taste and see for ourselves that the Lord is good two in sharing the gospel we must first be willing to go and it don't matter where you go it might be just to Walmart it might be to another bedroom in your house talking to somebody in your own family but go because you must have an audience and a message 
from God. Three, God's word should be proclaimed to all people, even if the word is found unappetizing to them. They don't want it, but we still got to give it to them. Four, do not compromise the gospel for acceptance. Don't be trying to be a people pleaser. Be a God pleaser. For it is impossible to please God without faith. So have faith in him. Have confidence in him and his word. Number five, receive God's word in your heart first. So you can share it with others. God called Ezekiel to walk a prophetic tightrope. On one hand, he was given a message that was filled with mournings and woes and lamentations. On the other hand, he noted that the message was nourishing and sweet. God's harshness rebukes are given for the eternal good of the hearer. Some complain that Christianity is a religion of no and that, that we are defined only by what we are against. On the other hand, some look at the positive affirmation and messages and, and grumble that the church does not take sin seriously. How do we preach? How do we preach a sweet gospel without compromise what the Bible says about the seriousness of sin. We have to do it. The prophecies of, of Ezekiel contain some of the blightest words in scripture regarding the fate of those who resist the truth of God's word. But the same prophecy, the same prophecy contains great words of hope and concludes with this promise. The Lord is there. Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35. So may we seek to offer that same balanced message. Yes, we got to talk about sin. Yes, we got to tell them. But the Lord is there each and every step. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Harden us against every opposition we may encounter. But keep our hearts soft, Lord, with your compassion for a lost world. Thank you for your word and what you have called us to do. Help us to put your words in our hearts and in our mouths and share it with others. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. A message of judgment without grace is no gospel at all. So as we end the recording here on Facebook, and we like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. So we pray the prayer of salvation. Please pray this prayer with us. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins, God, and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Those that are on Facebook, if you want to join us in our discussion, you can come and join us in overtime. The number is 910-218-0531. If you need prayer or even a prophetic word this morning, God may bless us to do that. Come on and join us. Facebook, be blessed. And uh, to the New Harvest Church in Kenya, we send our love to you and may God bless you and keep you.